So here we've got a horse that had a sinus infection about a month ago that responded to antibiotics and then he was referred in for evaluation of dental disease. Radiographically, there are some suspicions around the number nine teeth. We'll show you um, the screen here on the oral endoscope. You can see a normal tooth here, a normal tooth here, normal tooth, little chip piece here. And then here we have a tooth that fractured through pulps three and four. So this, this tooth here will have to be extracted. So that's the number 109. And then if we come to the other side, we have normal tooth, normal tooth, normal tooth. Here we have pretty deep infundibular caries. So we're gonna actually clean this area out here. We're gonna use files and, and burrs and we're actually gonna clean all of this out. And we're gonna fill this and that way we can save this tooth. If you look here, you can see where this tooth is is starting to want to crack and so it's it's for sure going to end up breaking if we don't do something. So this is a, a grade 3 in fundibular caries here. Um, this is also the side that he had the sinus infection on but in fundibular caries and don't typically cause an apical abscess until it progresses to a fracture or sometimes erodes into the pulp. So as we come back further here we can see how we also have a fracture of the uh, 211 tooth and so uh, it goes to show how you have cases where there's there can be multiple dental pathology and it's easy to just kind of focus on one but in this case to treat this horse right we have to treat the two fractured teeth which need to be extracted and then do the restoration on the 209 to save a problem from happening there so we'll uh, we'll show you what it looks like afterwards okay so here we've cleaned yep. out the infundibula, and then now we're ready to proceed with the filling, and then we'll move on to the extraction. So now we're gonna go ahead and put in an acid gel that's gonna etch the walls of the infundibulum. Okay, so we did both extractions and the restoration, which probably took an hour, hour and a half to do both. With a horse standing, again, you should never have to do general anesthesia for a dental um, surgery. Uh, so the horse was standing. But one thing I wanted to talk about, which is really often overlooked, is that you can't look at a horse's body condition score and assume that everything is fine in the, the mouth. What I mean by that is, Horses have a really strong instinct to survive, and uh, some horses can can keep weight on almost no matter what's going on in the mouth. When the mouth starts being so painful that horses start to lose weight, then you tend to have big problems, or teeth are wearing out, and you have some really serious issues. So that's where doing a good oral exam at least once a year is, is really important, because if you just went by the body condition on this horse, he looks fantastic. Even though you have one broken tooth on each side, sometimes if they have a broken tooth on one side, they can also compensate because they can chew on the other side. So you may not know that they have a problem because they mask it really well. So the, the way a horse looks is actually one of the worst uh, indicators for how their, their mouth is just because they're an animal that's, that's meant to survive and, and they'll almost eat no matter uh, what's going on in the mouth. So that's something to keep in mind. But now it should do really well after those extractions. And then that other tooth uh, went from being at a very high likelihood of fracturing to very, very low chance of fracturing after we did the filling on it.